Chandwell's Town Hall was vacated by the council in the early 1970s. It's now the home of two of Chandwell's most famous names. Ben's Beds opened here in 1978. And just around the corner is Chandwell's premier late night venue, Club Passion. Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building an old town hall for the bottom of High Street on my N-Gage model railway layout. I've been busy adding the elaborate detail on the two frontages. I'm not quite finished, but let's dive straight in and have a look at what I've done so far in Town Hall Part 4, Building Frontage. If you watched last week, you will have seen the video end with me ripping off the cornice. It was wonky, uneven, badly arranged, and I was just not happy with it. I rebuilt it using the same approach, but with a little tweak. This time, I printed the outline of the next layer on each piece. Some pieces were only inset half a millimetre, whereas others had a larger border. With the pieces cut out, these guidelines would make it much easier to arrange the parts when gluing them together. This piece has parts on top and on the bottom of it, so I printed guidelines on a separate piece of paper and glued it to the card to make it double-sided. Gluing the parts together was a breeze, and I was left with a much more accurate, better aligned and better proportioned cornice. I am much, much happier with this. Thank you to all the viewers who offered me suggestions last week. Please don't be offended that I didn't take your advice, but I filmed this on Thursday, which was the day before last week's video was published. The window surrounds were made in a similar way to the tower's window, which was part two of this series. I cut out a layer of delicate uprights in half millimetre card, and then a layer of window surrounds in one millimetre card. These arched parts are a shade under one millimetre wide, so a sharp scalpel, keen eye and steady hand are essential. The parts go together like this. A tiny keystone is dropped on top, and then these minute stone scrolls are cut from one millimetre card and are carefully added to the component. The whole thing is then painted in a thin primer. I take care to cover the whole thing, top, bottom, front and back. Once dry, the delicate card is almost plastic-like and it's surprisingly sturdy. The primer paint beds in the fluffy edges of the card and it looks a bit more like stone. As we watch me slowly cutting tiny bits of card, it's worth mentioning the alternative ways that you can achieve this. I often get comments from viewers who think that cutting card by hand is not the best way to approach this kind of job. Some think I'd be better off with a 3D printer, others with a laser cutter. Still others recommend cutting machines such as the Cricut. Every one of these has its place, and you can get amazing results from them, far better than I can with my trusty scalpel. But while I have decent eyesight, an arthritis free hand, and I don't shake too badly, I have to admit that I actually love this part of every build. An hour or so of focus, carefully cutting card, is one of my favourite things to do. It's so far removed from the stress of my day-to-day -day job that it's the perfect way for me to unwind. I'm not saying never, but for now I'm sticking with hand cutting my parts, because simply I enjoy it too much to want to stop. And just look, almost all of this was cut by me sitting at my desk, lost in a world containing only a cheap knife, a cheap bit of card and a lot of time. Anyway, back to the windows. Colour matching the black walls was interesting. It turns out that they are more of a deep dark blue than absolute black, so I mixed up a colour that was close enough and used that. The camera shows the differences quite clearly, but to my eye in real life, it's pretty close. The famous Ben's Bed sign was drawn in Inkscape and arranged in just the right proportions to fit in the gap between the two sets of windows. The sign for the nightclub was much more fun. I bought this Tibetan charm on eBay. Ten of them cost three pounds, so that's one nightclub sign, gifts for my wife and daughter, and I still have six left. Bargain! The metal is quite soft, so it was easy to slice off the loop. After undercoating with primer, I painted the whole thing red, and then laid on orange and yellow. Once that was dry, I put a wash of dark red-black over the whole thing to settle into the recesses, and then rebrushed on the colours. I then just used super glue to stick it to the club's frontage. 
This side has not been covered up with a cheapo sign and the elaborate stonework is still visible. Like in part 2, this detail is a 3D nail art sticker. The windows were glazed using my usual sticky label method. I used watercolour paint to colour the frames black on the club side. And I printed simple black backings for the upper windows, complete with club passion branding. The frontages are far from finished, I still need to add coins, details between the outer sets of windows, downspouts and weathering. But before I can do any of that, I need the back two walls in place. And before I can do those, I need to finish the glazing and the cellar detail and get the ground in place. So join me next week then to see how I get on with all of that. If you could do me a favour and press the thumbs up button for me, that would be super. It always gives me encouragement to see that people like my videos, which do take quite a lot of effort to make. Here's a look at the way I approached the stonework detail on the Earl Chandfield a few months ago. So until next week then, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.